All right. Good morning, everybody. We are live. Sorry, about 10 minutes late this morning. About 10 minutes late, and uh, we'll give everybody a few, uh, everybody about 60 seconds to uh, chime in here. But uh, let's get, uh, let's invite some friends, huh? Let's invite some friends. Just invite a few people, give folks uh, an opportunity to show up. And it won't let me invite it anymore. Kooky. Hey, Ricardo. What's up, man? Aaron, thanks for joining me. We're going to talk about uh, talk about the hunger game today, but not. I'm not going to teach you how to hunt down your neighbors with a bow and arrow. Although that could be fun too. <laughs> I don't know your. Hey, <laughs> I don't know your neighbors. My new neighbors seem to be pretty cool, but if it comes down to uh, starving to death. <laughs> hey, John, how you doing, buddy? Hope everything's going well. Hope you're getting those action steps started. Having a little cold brew this morning. No Kahlua in this one. Too early. All right, so guys, today I wanted to talk about the difference between emotional hunger and physical hunger because it's um, we talked about uh, emotional eating uh, last week in one of these live videos and basically just to recap emotional hunger means that you uh, you turn to food in moments of stress either avoid uncomfortable shit happening up here uncomfortable emotions and feelings and stuff or you turn to it to elevate pleasurable uh, feelings and basically you're eating based on how you feel instead of what your body currently needs as fuel. And especially in our 40s, 50s, and beyond, that is one of the best ways for us to pack on extra weight. And one of the first places it goes for us older guys is straight to the stomach. So if you're carrying around a couple extra pounds, I still am. I'm still battling with it. So I've been really, really careful to notice when I'm deciding to eat and some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, you know, before you, before you turn your nose up to it and go, you know, I don't, I don't emotionally eat. I don't have problems with my emotions. So yes, dude, stop bullshitting yourself. Guys have emotional eating problems just as prevalent as women do. It's there's a comfort food is a real thing. Comfort food is a real thing. Eating because of stress, eating out of boredom, eating because you're feeling some anxiety or you're battling some depression. You have some some chick broke your heart. Uh, it, sadness, loneliness, it's all real, and guys do it just as much as women. Hell, I'd like to see a. Uh, I'd like to actually see a. Uh, a study done on it. I'm sure there's one out there. I should look it up. But uh, <clears throat> think of how many times you've had a bad day at work and you you had 18 chicken wings and four beers. <clears throat> it wasn't because you were hungry. It's just that was your coping mechanism. It's the way you're coping with the stress or the bullshit from your from your boss. And it's a real thing. Hey James. Hey Dale. Thanks for joining us. So the flip side of that emotional hunger coin is your physical hunger. And that's like the real thing. That means your body is uh, sending you signals to your brain, telling you that you need to refuel the machine, okay? It also means that you stop eating when you're satisfied before you become like ridiculously uncomfortable, okay? So we all know the signs of uh, physical hunger. You know, you got the stomach growling, low blood sugar, low energy. You feel weak. Um, you get the shakes because of the low energy. You might even uh, feel a little lightheaded, might get a headache. Uh, I, 
I tend to get headaches when I really, really need to eat. So uh, those are all physical signs. So now, wow, that air conditioner is really hella loud, huh? I didn't realize until it came, until it turned off. My uh, my office is right next to the main uh, heat and air unit in our house. Uh, well, I mean, there's a wall between us, but um, there's not a solution. It's just loud. All right, so so once again, recap: emotional hunger is when you turn to food to you know deal with some feelings, some emotions, stress, boredom, uh, you know, eating for comfort eating out of uh, loneliness or sadness and then physical hunger is exactly what it is that's what your body is your body is telling you that you actually need calories you need macronutrients you need all the stuff that your body is requiring to function properly okay you know stomach growling low energy all that stuff and you know about that that's the easy part so if you listen to your body instead of your feelings instead of your uh, your head. So if you listen to your gut, to <laughs> your head, I guess is the way to put that. What is that going to get to you? Get for you? Well, you can stop being a slave to food. Okay. I talked to someone. Um, I had a coaching call with someone uh, last week, and they've lost a ton of weight. I mean, just just amazing. Uh, you know, over a hundred pounds. And they're afraid to give themselves a cheat day because the, it, it might derail them. Well, that's in a way that that's something, you know, we're probably going to need to work on because you don't want to be afraid of food. You don't want to be a slave to food. Okay. Does that make, that make, make sense? Um, you're going to feel like if you can be in tune with your body's signals, on when you're hungry, when you're full, and you start honoring those feelings of fullness and hunger, you're going to be less dependent on food delivering other things to you. Does that make sense? Hey, Steve, thanks for joining us, buddy. Um, so listening to your actual physical hunger signals you're going to be able to determine exactly how full or how hungry you really are. You're going to be able to pinpoint exactly where your body is at any given point. So you're going to be able to set yourself up uh, and, and plan your meals better. You're going to be able to know when it's time to stop eating more appropriately. You're going to overeat less. Okay. And, uh, you know, you're going to eat less often when you're bored, pissed off, hurt, uh, feeling anxious, feeling depressed. You're going to be able to curb those instances of eating better if you're more in tune with what your body's saying to you. Okay. So playing the hunger game that's what it said so that i it's just a cool clever title but there actually is a little game that i want you guys to try playing and it's um it's really easy three simple easy steps like i said at the beginning of the video the hunger game is not i'm not going to teach you to go out into the neighborhood with a bow and arrow and kill out all the competition so you got all the food to yourself no what we're going to do is take these three super simple steps and play a little game with ourselves. Nobody else has to even know you're playing the game. And it's something you can do by yourself, and you can even do it in a uh, like a, a super busy, crowded restaurant. Nobody's even going to know. Last week, we talked about how slowing down your meal process, chewing your food, putting your fork down, taking time, will help you shed weight because you're going to be eating less because it takes longer for your body to register that you're full and satiated than you think it does. If you're one of those people that just wolfs down your, your meal in like three minutes, a whole plate of food, you eat it in three minutes, you're probably overeating every time you sit down in front of a plate of food because you're not giving your body time to know 
that you had enough. In other words, you fill up your gut and then your body goes, holy shit, where did all this food come from? Okay. As opposed to slowly chewing your food, letting your body know that there's food going into the system. And then your body says, hey, you know what? We're starting to reach. We're slowly reaching that point where we've had enough food. It's time to back off. Okay. So that's why slowing down is really important. Hey, John, thanks for joining us, buddy. So here's how to play the hunger game. Step number one, you're going to see if you can be the slowest eater at the table. Like I said, no one even needs to know that you're playing this game. It's just for you. Now, if you're eating by yourself, what can you do? Set a timer. All right. See if you can stretch your food, your meal out. Um, if it currently takes you five minutes to eat your plate of food, which is, I mean, that's puppy at the supper dish with feet up in the air. That's serious. The serious challenge, and we all do it. Okay. So if it takes you five minutes, try to stretch that out to fifteen. Just set a timer. Take a bite. Set the fork down. Chew your food. Swallow your food. Go back after it. Okay. Quit this shoveling shit. It's not good for you. You're packing on extra pounds because you're doing it. And it's such a simple, easy thing to do that there's no way you shouldn't fucking be doing it, right? You have no excuse. If you know this, you have no excuse for not doing it. Just, oh, I eat the way I want to eat. Come on, man. Just get over yourself. You're obviously in this group because you want some advice. Just try it and see, and see okay? Now, so that's step number one. Step number two, periodically check in with yourself during your meal. Make it an actual mental thing to ask yourself how you're feeling. How am I doing right now? Okay. You don't have to stand up and proclaim how you're feeling. <laughs> okay. To everybody at the table, you just kind of check in with yourself, honor how you're feeling in these moments. Uh, am I, I'm starting to feel pretty full. I'm starting to feel energized from the food I'm eating. <clears throat> I feel like I'm, I'm pretty reaching pretty close to the end of this meal. Just take that time while you're chewing your food to think about, you know, just what is it? It takes two seconds. Oh, where am I at with this? As opposed to, uh, 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 okay. Have you guys seen the uh, the episode of The Simpsons where Homer goes to hell and uh, the uh, devil puts the, the clothespin on his nose and opens his head and starts shoveling in donuts? And he's just, yeah, that you don't want that to be you, okay? All right, so then here's the here's the big one. You need to create a ritual where you have signified that your meal is over. Okay, how do you do that? Um, put a napkin over your plate. Push the plate away. Uh, make a, a grand uh, display of oh, whew, that was awesome. All right, whatever it is, nobody else has to know about it, right? Nobody else has to know what the uh, what the ritual is. It's just for you to signify to yourself that your meal is over. When that happens, you stop picking at the fucking plate. You leave it alone. Ask the waitress to come get it, even if it's half full of food. Ask them to box it up for you, okay? Ask them to box it up for you and keep it warm if you want. So that... And then ask for the box when you leave. Whatever you have to do to keep you from going back at that plate. And leave everybody else's plate the fuck alone too. Okay? That's really important. When you're done with your meal, you stop eating. You finished that meal because you had decided that was enough food. You had reached the point where you knew you had had enough fuel in the tank and your body was satiated. So stop eating eating and that's how you're gonna I mean if you if you just start doing it just experiment with this for a couple of weeks and I'm telling you you will if, if you've reached a point where no matter how much you work out no matter how much you no matter what you eat no matter how much water you're drinking whatever you've reached like a plateau focus on you eat the way you're eating and how you're being when you eat and I Man, I almost guarantee that you will start to see results again. It's almost like a like a like a kickstart. Well, you you know, kickstart your metabolism again. And it's huge, and it'll pay you big dividends, especially if you can make this a lifestyle change, as opposed to just 
something you're doing for a diet, if that makes sense. Lasting change happens little bitty increments at a time. You can't lose 100 pounds overnight, but you can't even lose 10 pounds by the end of the week. But what can I do today to make sure I'm chipping away at it? Change the way you eat. Notice I didn't say change what you eat today. I said just change the way you eat. And you could even start seeing benefits right away. Okay? So that's today. So now what? Okay? Hey, I'm willing to work with you guys. Give me a call. I help clients all the time learn how the difference between emotional eating and physical hunger. Together, we come up with a plan to help you keep identifying the differences and so that you can lose weight naturally and uh, sometimes double your energy. Because I don't know about you, but when I overeat, dude, I'm done. I'm done. Sometimes I'm done for the rest of the day. Like, like if I go to a brunch buffet and I just mow, you know, uh, if I just go for it at a buffet or something like a brunch or a lunch buffet, I'm done for the rest of the day. Okay. You learn how to listen to your body, learn how to listen to your real hunger signals instead of your emotional hunger signals. You're going to have a lot more energy. You're going to start to lose weight. Okay. So if you think you might be engaging in some emotional eating, you don't know what to do, what to, how to change it, just, uh, just, just hit me up. Just hit me up. Send me a message. There is a uh, link in the uh, description of this video that will take you to a, a uh, printout of everything I talked about today. That is at Keith's Daily Data Dump. Click on that. Join that group. Uh, actually, it's not a group. It's just a, it's part of my teachable courses. It's completely free, 100% free. You click on that, and uh, it'll take you there. You can join it, and you'll have instant access to everything in there. Um, every month, I add 10, 12 pieces of, of content for you guys. So kind of been slow this month because I'm, I've been in the last couple of weeks. I've been in the process of moving, but uh, I'm going to start to ramp up today ramp this up again and have more great stuff for you in the group. If you want to um, schedule a call, look, totally free. Uh, I'm going to spend an hour with you and talk about everything that's going on, talk about what's going good, talk about what not's going good, and uh, <clears throat> see if we can come up with a, some action plans to get you moving in the right direction. Some of the guys in the group are working with me now, and uh, I know they're – I know they're quite happy. So if you have any, uh, you know, if you have any uh, questions, maybe post post the question in the group, and maybe one of those guys can get with you. Um, other than that, that is the end of our uh, our Facebook Live for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, remember, tomorrow is Thirsty Thursday, so I'll have another wonderful concoction for you at that time. Later. <laughs>